All right, friends, so we're having our first ever W2 Millionaire Summit in Orlando, Florida, this fall, September 12th, 14th, at the World Marriott Center. You need to come. Early bird tickets are available right now. Gobble them up at the huge discount. Bring your family for a Disney vacation. This is an event you do not want to miss. We're going to have some of the biggest names in real estate speaking at this event, teaching you everything from how to buy rentals, fix and flip, raising private capital, analyzing deals, and most importantly, you're going to be able to network with tons of other investors from all across the country, which could absolutely change your real estate business. So we're going to put the link to sign up down in the show notes. Go click it, get the early bird special today, and I'll see you in Orlando in September. The Federal Reserve just recently announced they're going to keep rates the exact same. What does that mean? Well, absolutely nothing, at least for the long term. Check this out. If we look at this graph, we can see that rates have gone up and down since the 1910s. Now, looking at the 1960s into the 70s and 80s, we had very high inflation, specifically under President Carter. But outside of that outlier of a huge jump where people were paying 16, 17, 18% interest for houses, most of the time, rates have been known to go up and down over time. The problem with what we're seeing during this cycle is we were getting 2.8% rates, three. And so it was insane. And we look today and rates are sitting at, you know, if you're trying to buy a house, maybe six and a half to seven and a half. And not only that, we had huge inflation hit all at the same time. And so maybe if we had six and a half percent rates five years ago before so much inflation and the price of housing went up, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. But because we had the two hit at the same time and then mix in a global pandemic, anybody remember that? It's just been pure chaos, to be completely honest. So in the long term, this will just be another blip on the graph when we look back 10 years from now what the rates are doing today. But let's talk about what is it going to do to the economy, to investors, to people who want to buy homes in the short term. Well, obviously, it's going to keep debt more expensive. We've noticed that there's a lot of folks that are trying to come into the housing market. So people that are fresh out of college, you got new jobs, trying to buy that new starter home, that it's very hard for them because where they could get into a home at 150 to 175 grand in a lot of areas previously, well, those homes have not only bumped up to 250 to 300, but also the rate that would have been three to 4% years ago is now sitting at seven and a half percent. And so we've boxed a number of people out. We've also boxed the people out who already own a home locked in at a low interest rate. I myself am one of those folks. I bought my house and I looked the other day, I thought I had a 2.9 rate. I have a 3.1. So I was a little bit off, but I'm sitting at a 3.1% interest rate and I'm looking and why would I upgrade anytime soon? My debt is ridiculously expensive. My house costs $760,000. If I wanted the same payment, I think I'd have to buy a house that sits like $450,000, four to five hundred dollars ish So I'd have to downsize in what I'm able to get just to have the same payment that I'm paying today, which is $3,500. And I got a way larger purchase price, a bunch of land, big house, blah, blah, blah. And so we have folks like myself who are saying, you know what? I'm not going to move right now because I'm locked in at such a low interest. Now we also have the people who have no self-control and they just want what they want and they get it now. And um, they're making the jump, but there's not, it's not a majority. So what that's doing is it's limiting the amount of transactions that the market is having. In addition to that, we still have a ridiculous supply shortage. We are millions upon millions of homes short for the amount of homes we need. Now, I think we'll probably be able to close that gap between the shortage and where we need to be quicker because there's so many builders building homes, yet there's not as many people buying. And so we may end up having more houses than we do buyers, which that will affect the developers at some point here in the coming years. But it'll also help bring the cost of housing down. Now, one thing for investors, from my standpoint that I look at when the Fed say, okay, we're keeping interest rates where they are, is I know that means I'm going to take a hit in cash flow. So on investment properties, rental properties that I'm buying right now, I'm getting around a seven and a half percent rate. When rates are higher as an investor, you have to understand that your cash flow is what's going to get hit. Because if we had less cash flow, let's say we got, you know, a property that we bought for 200,000 bucks on a seven and a half percent interest rate. And we compare that to a $200,000 property that was on a four and a half percent interest rate. We may be paying 300 bucks less on that 4% interest rate than we are on the seven and a half percent interest rate. So what's that going to do to our cash flow? Well, that's going to bump it up. If we were paying at a 4% rate instead of a seven and a half, that means we're going to have 300 bucks more in cash flow every month coming from that particular property. But guess what, friends? That's not the environment we're in right now. So we got two decisions we can make. Number one, we can say, I'm just not going to buy because I don't like rates. 
Or we can zoom out and we can say, you know what? The feds didn't drop the rates. They're still high. Debt's expensive. It's eaten into my cash flow. But I am smart enough to understand that this is temporary. That rates, when we look at that graph, go up and down. But I want you guys to check this graph out. What has real estate done over time? Look at this graph. It continues to go up and up and up and up and up. Not only do the price of homes go up, but check out this one rents have continued to go up over the last 100 years. And so we may buy today and we're not getting the deal we love because of this one outlier of rates, it's hurting the cash flow. But if we zoom out, we got to say, okay, well, this asset is going to continue to go up in value over time. So it's going to build equity for me. And while it's going up in time, tenants are paying down my debt. Also, those tenants payments are going to be more every year based on historical data because rents are going to continue to go up. So even if we get stuck at this rate, whatever our cash flow number is today is only going to improve over time strictly based on increased rents and not even factoring in being able to refinance into a lower rate in the future. Now, I showed you the graph of what real estate's done over time. Now, I want to show you the rate of inflation that the U.S. is moving at. Check this out. It's absolutely insane. Now, we were already heading in that direction, but when the 1970s came up until today, inflation is running rampant, and it's not going to slow down. We're going to continue printing money. That graph's going to continue to go straight up. What happens to the U.S. dollar when inflation goes up? It usually loses purchasing power. Check out this graph. This graph just shows the strict value of the dollar, dollar index over the last, whatever, 70 to 100 years, you can see that, you know, it'll peak and then it'll go back down, go up, go back down. Today, it's actually less than it was in what, the 1960s or 1970s. And I would venture to say that the purchasing power is way less than what the value of the actual dollar is that we're seeing on this screen. And so we, we know that inflation is going to continue to go up. When that happens, the value of the dollar goes down. And so it's so easy to want to store our cash. We want to save. That's what broke people do. We want to save our, save our way to wealth. We want to hold on to that capital, but you have to understand that you are going to lose money over time if you do that because the cost of goods are going to keep going up while the value of the dollar is going down. But if we go back to the other graph of real estate, what does real estate do over time? It goes up. It's actually a hedge against inflation. And so we have to look from a macro view and say, okay, if I'm going to hedge against what's definitely coming in the future, then I have to have an asset that can do that. That's going to continue appreciating while the cash flow continues to grow because rents are getting higher. And then from a micro view, we got to say, okay, on a micro level, sometimes we're not going to get the deals we want year one. That year one pro forma because of rates just didn't where I wanted to be. But you know what? I'm smart enough to know that over time, this is going to hedge against that inflation. This is going to make me wealthier. It's going to continue going up in value. My tenants pay down my debt while I'm getting tax benefits. My cash flow is going up. And so I can say, okay, today isn't the best deal. Maybe this is a single, but I know in 5, 10, 15 years, this single that I bought today is going to turn into a double, triple, and home run. And that is what separates the great investors from the good investors or the great investors from people who never get started investing. Because what happens is people are sitting around waiting for the perfect time to invest. They want rates to be perfect. They want rent prices to be perfect. And they want purchase prices to be perfect. Let me tell you something. It will never line up that way. It'll never happen. And if it does happen, there'll be enough people in your ear telling you that it's a bad time to buy that you still won't buy. I'm telling you, I've heard it. I flipped my first house in 2016. I've been buying heavily since 2018, 2018. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 24. Every single year, people told me it is a bad time to buy real estate. Don't be buying real estate for whatever reason. I could go through and find my notes of reasons people told me not to buy. I didn't listen. I kept buying good, undervalued deals that I could add value to where I could either break even or make money on cash flow. And I knew it was going to get better over time, left myself a bunch of equity with long-term stable debt. And I repeated this process over and over and over and over again. When all the broke naysayers who thought they had it all figured out were telling me to do something else while they're drowning in debt, drown the noise out, stayed the course, kept buying the asset that has proven itself since the beginning of time and we look back today and it is the best thing my wife and I could have ever done. I'm so glad I did it and did not listen to what people are saying. And so I want to encourage you. There's a lot of fear that gets put out into the news. It's literally how they make money. They sell on fear. Sure, take that fear and be cautious, but don't let it paralyze you. 
because we have to be able to zoom out and see that we're going to win over time if we buy right now, although micro condi conditions may not be perfect in the macro we're going to win. It's no secret that if you're going to be successful in real estate investing, you have to be able to fund your deals. Whether you're doing the Burr method or whether you're fixing and flipping properties for a profit, you got to be able to get to the closing table with money and you got to have money to rehab the property. And so I personally use backflip capital when I need money to get to the closing table and to rehab my properties. I'm in the middle of a flip right now and I partner with backflip. It has been the smoothest process of all all time. I literally went on their app, applied for the loan. You get pre-approved in less than 48 hours. You can lock in funding in just a few seconds with the touch of a button. Funding takes less than two weeks. Hello, that gives you an advantage when you're making offers on properties. And I can't say enough about partnering with Backflip Capital. They're great folks with a fantastic product that everybody listening to this should check out for the next time you go to do a bird deal or fix and flip property. So here's what I want you to do. Go down to the show notes of this show. I've put a link link for Backflip Capital in those notes. All you have to do is click the link so that you can download their app and get your next deal funded with Backflip. And to talk about a potential upcoming crash, I think that's insanity. The s and is doing as good as it ever has. Lending practices are still strong. That's what got us in trouble in 08. They were giving all these subprime mortgages and lending people money that did not deserve the money, or they were giving them way more money than they should have been giving them. That doesn't happen today. The lending position is in a pretty good place outside of potentially one little pocket of real estate, which is commercial real estate. But the rest of it, the average consumer has very strong, predictable, safe, secure loans that they're locked into. And so if you're sitting around waiting for this crash to buy real estate, well, you're going to keep waiting forever. 08, that is the first time. If you go back and look at a graph from 1940, and, and I'll see if my team can throw this up, but there's this graph that shows real estate. I think it's from like 1940 to today or whatever. There's only been seven years where real estate stayed the same in value and went or went down. The rest of the time it's gone up. And five of those seven years were in that 08, 09, 10, 11, 12 period. So if that tells you anything, this isn't something that happens every seven to 10 years. Anybody who tells you that obviously isn't looking at data and has no idea what they're talking about. This is something that was a one-off from terrible lending practices, and we got hammered with that recession. But if we go back to the 40s up until today, that's the only time that's happened. And so we have to be able to t play the odds and say, okay, that could happen. It very well could. But at that point, everybody's screwed. So why not buy strategically, safely mitigate the risk on the bottom side by good undervalued deals with long-term stable debt and good tenants in good areas, be able to ride the upside. And even if the downside comes, we've bought good properties where we can protect ourselves and we can weather the storm. So I don't care what interest rates do. They're going to go up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. But guess what? Real estate's going to continue to go up. We know inflation is going to go up and the dollar's going to go down. So you choose. What do you think is going to win in the long run? The same thing that's been winning since the beginning of time. Real estate, you need to get in. This video was helpful to you. Click the like button, subscribe, send this to somebody. It helps the channel out. It helps us get this message out to as many people as possible. Thanks for joining the show today. I'll see you next week.